Hey, this is LOA Today, the Law of Attraction Show. Welcome to LOA Today. My name is Walt Thiessen. Today is Friday, January 18, 2013. And with me today is Brian Hom, who had a, a rather difficult situation, very, very sad situation happen to him and his family while they were on vacation. They lost a child. A child died during that vacation. But that event, as sad and as tragic as it, as it was, is something he's turned into a positive today. And, and we want him to tell his story directly to you. So first of all, Brian, welcome to the program. Thank you, Walt, for having me. Glad to have you here. Uh, without further ado, why don't you tell the story from the beginning and, and just clue our listeners in what happened and then what you've been doing about it since then. Yeah, well, what happened was uh, back on July 1st, 2008, uh, we had planned a special vacation to celebrate my oldest son, BJ, with his uh, nickname, celebrating his 18th birthday and graduation from high school. So we had planned this vacation to Los Cabos, Mexico, to uh, go down there to an all-inclusive resort to celebrate this happy occasion. So we were all excited. We left from San Francisco that, that morning, arrived in Cabos at around 7 o'clock at the airport, got to the resort after the shuttle around 8 o'clock. So um, it was getting late, so the uh, resort staff said you need to go eat your dinner so we basically went to our room just dumped off our suitcase didn't even unpack and headed off to the uh to the buffet restaurant that was in the resort so we went in there my wife and i my son bj and his two younger sons brandon and Steve, and his two younger brothers brandon and steven and we all ate in the resort everything seemed fine we were all happy having a good time we ate and it was still light out, so I, su- I suggested that we walk along the beach, uh, take a look at the uh, the swimming pool. So we walked along the beach, along the swimming pool, and then as we were walking, you know, we came across a uh, little arcade, so we decided to hang out there. And then my son BJ comes to me. He, he said, uh, Dad, you know, my throat hurts. Can you buy me some cough drops? And I'm just thinking this is July 1st. It's the summer. He's athletic. He's healthy. And now he's telling me his throat hurts. So I said, okay, let's go to the gift shop. So we went to a gift shop in the lobby. I got him the cough drops. And he took them, and he took one in his mouth, and he walked off with my wife, and I stayed with my two other sons in the arcade. Then all of a sudden, there's a woman who came to the arcade and said, uh, sir, you need to go to the lobby. Your son's fallen ill. And I run over to the lobby, and I'm thinking to myself, now, what happened now? You know, we just arrived, and... Everything seemed fine, and I go over there, and I see BJ. He's gasping for air. His lips are blue. He's all pale, and I'm thinking, oh, no, he's choking on the cough drop. Mm. And then the staff starts coming over, and they're trying to administer some you know, some CPR because he's, he's turning bluer and bluer, and he's, he's basically collapsing, and I'm thinking, oh, no, what's happening? And I said, where's the doctor? I thought this is, you know, this is a resort. You're supposed to have an on-site doctor. And, you know, it's already around 9, 9.30, and and they're saying he's gone for the day. I said, is the ambulance coming? They're saying, yeah, it's coming. It's coming. And I said, okay. And finally, you know, it seemed like forever, but the paramedics did come, and now they're trying to get tubes down my son's throat because mm. he's, you know, having difficulties breathing. Right. And, you know, and I'm, my wife and I are just in tears, and we're, we're screaming, and the crowd is coming around, and I'm asking the staff, I said, is my son okay? And they're saying, uh, he seems to be breathing, but he's so blue, and I'm telling my wife, if he comes to, there's going to be brain damage. I said, I don't see how he's going to be okay. And then finally the doctor arrives, and he comes, and I'm telling the doctor, is he going to be okay? They're telling me he's breathing. He He basically takes his hand and takes a pulse on his neck and he turns to me and he just shakes his head and says sorry and he covers my son's head with a blanket and he pronounces him dead and and my wife and i are wondering what happened what happened and then stephen at the time who was 13 he comes to me he's scratching 
his nose is running and I'm saying, oh no, I said, maybe there's something in the food. So I told the management there, I said, can you check? And they found out there was peanuts in the chocolate mousse and BJ was allergic to peanuts. Oh, and yeah. so was Steven. So I told the doctor, can you save Steven? And they were able to inject him with something, uh, with some kind of shot and give him some antihistamine and he was able to survive. So I could have lost two sons that day. Mm. And um, so since that day, I've made it a personal mission now to find a cure and so no other families have to suffer a similar loss and also to find what the cause is. Yeah, I can imagine that that would be a major priority in your life. Um, as you know, we had Elizabeth Hamilton on a few weeks back who um, has also been an advocate with you. And in fact, you and she, I believe, have started a website together on this topic. Um, but uh, after her interview was posted, and uh, I referred to the fact that she had her own experience with allergies to, to nuts, to peanuts in particular, um, there were a, a number of very positive comments about it, particularly on the web, web uh, yeah, <clears throat> the Facebook page. But uh, there were also a few people who were saying, well, why would anybody eat food with nuts in it if they're allergic to nuts? That, that doesn't make any sense. Can you address that? Oh, I can address that. I mean, we knew that BJ had peanut allergies when he was around two or three years old. We always avoided peanuts in his diet. You know, he, the most severe reaction he ever got was a little bit of an itchy throat, a little bit of swelling, and we would give him some antihistamine and that was enough. And he would just, you know, lay down a little bit. But this reaction, an anaphylactic shock, I had never seen in my whole life. I thought he was choking on the cough drops. Mm. We, we, we tested the food. We thought, you know, that it did not contain peanuts. BJ always knew that. He actually asked us that day, and we tasted it. We didn't taste peanuts in there. Uh, we knew that if he did have a reaction, we always thought it would be minor. And a lot of people think that most reactions that you get are minor will continue to be minor. And that's another thing I'm trying to raise awareness is that because you have a minor reaction for 18 years, it could be one day that you get a full anaphylactic shock and you need to be prepared for it. We did not have an epinephrine tin, which is one of the things that combats, you know, severe food allergies. The doctors didn't prescribe it because they thought it would be minor. See, technology and, and understanding and knowledge of food allergies are much different now than, than they were before. BJ was born in 1990. From 1990 to 2007, Peanut allergies tripled. So prior to 1990, wow, say that again. Not, from 1990 to 2000, from, from 1997 to 2007, peanut allergies have tripled. Wow. So when BJ was born in 1990, when we heard about peanut allergy, it was not a common thing. So I've gone back to the doctors and asked why they didn't, you know, prescribe epinephrine. You know, because they said the knowledge and the severity of peanut allergies back when BJ was born was not as severe as it is today. Like I said, right now you got one out of 13 children with food allergies right now. So that's 8%. That means in every classroom there's, you know, two kids that basically have some type of food allergy now. But getting back to your question is why would anyone do it? We didn't plan for him to eat it and we knew he was allergic, but it was accidental. You'll find that most of the people who have died, you know, from the food allergies is that it was accidental. They knew they were allergic. Either they were not prepared with an epinephrine pin or did not get the emergency care they needed. And that, and more importantly, they didn't know that it was in the food. Even if, in, yeah, in your case, I, you, you checked and you still didn't know it was in there. Yeah, exactly. I mean, you, you do, probably when you go out and eat with a food allergy, you know, and people always ask, then you don't go out and eat then. <laughs> yeah. Because you're now depending on the chef to be honest right. or anybody who's preparing the food that they did not touch. You know, I can share with you a case in a, 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 of a, a friend of mine now because I, I've connected since my, my son died in 2008. His daughter died, you know, and, and she ate at a sandwich shop, ate the same sandwich, 50 times at the mall 
one day she goes there and she eats the same sandwich and then she's feeling having difficulties breathing she's thinking she's having you know an asthma attack so she goes to the bathroom she ends up collapsing some woman picks up her phone calls the mother come there come to the restroom you know your daughter's fallen ill by the time she gets there she, she died what happened was they baked peanut butter cookies at that sandwich shop and it touched her sandwich just so touched I'm just it. saying just touched it yeah cross contamination wow that's, that's so that's the amazing. thing is that you can be as careful as you want, you know, and, you know, you know, since I've gone public with the story, you know, like you said, I've been criticized, you know, why did you allow him to eat it? I didn't want him to eat it if I knew it was in there. Yeah, who you know, would? It's hard to live in a bubble, you know, you, you try your best, you, you know, you can stay at home, not go out and eat and everything, but, you know, at some point, you know, you may end up accidentally eating which means that the real solution is, uh, obviously, you do try to avoid eating stuff, but the real solution is to make sure you're prepared in case something does happen. Yeah, that's what actually, you know, I'm an advocate for having a food allergy action plan, meaning that when you decide to go out, that you do question the chef, and we do that now. You know, we learn the hard way because we have mm. Stephen who we've we've confirmed will be anaphylactic at some point when he eats accidentally eats peanuts, too is that we've got to go with the chef, and we got to talk to them and make sure there's none. And But, we're, cause again, it's a trust factor, right? You're, you're right. trusting that the cook is cleaning the utensils. They're not cross-contaminating. Secondly, we, we always carry an epinephrine pin, you yeah. know, auto-injector. So now we carry one for Stephen. Stephen carries one all over the place with him. So that's another thing, you know. And we try to avoid going out unless we know the restaurant you know we pick specific restaurants to go to and you always got to be careful prepared to know to call 911 immediately right you need to know where the closest hospital is the day that bj died it was probably the most heartbreaking day of my wife and i's life you know it's like someone ripped out her heart anybody losing a child mm. you know is tragic enough but to lose it because he he ate a chocolate mousse dessert is just yeah. you know unbelievable that you know you would want to lose your child because he he ate something that anybody else could eat and not suffer but you know the the eight percent of people who have food allergies are out there always on their mind that one day they may end up you know dying and, and do we have any knowledge at this point why there's this tremendous increase because you mentioned it's now tripled compared to say 15 years ago, the number of cases. That, that's, that's astonishing. There's, there's got to be some of, sort of there's case There's a lot there. of theories right now. The thing, the theories is that, you know, our society has now become so uh, high on hygiene that we don't allow our bodies to build the immunity. And what happens is that, you know, by the time you're the age of two, you, you get around 35 vaccines, which, you know, when I was growing up, I had maybe five or six, you know, the basic measles, diphtheria, smallpox type shots. Now you, you don't, you're not even allowing your child to get, you know, chicken pox, which, you know, when I was growing up, everybody got chicken pox. Right? So your body learns to build immunity towards these different, you know, germs or different uh, viruses that come into the body. And so when someone consumes things, the body is saying here here's a foreign thing i'm going to attack it when food goes in the bo into the body and it and the body reacts and thinks it's you know a foreign matter it, it causes it, it it releases what they call histamines which basically shuts down your body to combat this foreign matter here mm -hmm. you know so when my son bj ate the peanuts you know his blood pressure dropped you know his body started shutting down you know and, and he had difficulties breathing he basically suffocated to death and such, but that's one theory is that we're too clean now and we take in too many vaccines. The other thing is, you know, the theory of the genetically modified foods, you know, that we're now eating a lot of stuff that isn't natural because there's been situations when there's been studies of groups that are the people who eat more organically, like the people, the Amish people, uh, they they do not eat or they do not take vaccines. They have a very low number of food allergy cases. So uh -huh. that's another one there. Yeah. And, you know, no one knows for sure, you know, 
it's, we just know that it's on the increase. There's 15 million Americans now with food allergies, you know, and it, it's affecting our kids, you know, and no one knows. There's no cure for it, and no one knows the cause. And that, like I said, that's become a personal mission with me. I'm working with Stanford Hospital now with my son, uh, Stephen. He, he's doing a patch study that allows – it's called a peanut patch. So they put it on you, and it helps build your – your immunity to the peanut so that hopefully you won't go anaphylactic if you eat it. Mm-hmm. So basically, they increase the dosage on the patch, and then your body starts building the ability to combat the fact that it's not a dangerous food for you anymore. You mentioned that uh, uh, this is what's been going on within the United States. Um, our listenership actually is worldwide. We have listeners in Asia, Africa, Europe, Australia. What's happening in other countries? Are they seeing yeah, the same I kind of thing? Yeah, I actually had um, Korea come over uh, a year ago to talk to my wife and I, and they're seeing a dramatic increase in Korea. Japan is seeing increases. Um, actually, even in Mexico, um, they're seeing increases. What we're seeing, you know, a definite increase in the UK, you know, there's been several deaths in the UK, so it's become a worldwide phenomenon. But it seems to be more in the developed countries. But I think part of that might be skewed because in the underdeveloped com- countries, they may not do autopsies, and you know, they may have a death, and they don't know that it was a food allergy mm. reason. See, even when we, my son died in Mexico, you know, we we had to do an autopsy there, but to them, they did they didn't know that it was a food allergy we had to call up to my doctor who was in san jose who spoke spanish because the the doctor down there didn't speak english and they confirmed through the autopsy that this was an anaphylactic shock but right. if you were to look at his um death certificate they said heart attack you know 18 year old gets heart attack you know mm. from eating in a restaurant which i said no but it misleading. is a worldwide phenomenon, like I said. It's it's happening everywhere, and we don't know if, you know, if it's environmental, genetically. You know, my wife, the thing about the genetics, my wife and I have no food allergies. We actually confirmed it again after BJ's death and went for, you know, the basic skin scratch test, the blood test, and we both have zero food allergies. Mm. But what happened is we, we end up with three kids who come up positive for peanuts. Right. Two of them are severe. The third one, he can eat it, but his is what they call like a pollen reaction to the peanut. So his blessed, my son Brandon, who is a middle child, when he eats peanuts, he has more of a, a pollen-type reaction, even though his blood test says it should be a severe anaphylactic. So, you know, we've learned that... Um, there's something that's causing it, and I'm not sure what it is. You know, I don't know if it's genetic, environmental, or whatever, but it's on the increase. And I'm just saying the numbers are just, it's become an epidemic. Mm-hmm. And it's just been a spread. And it's been a challenge, I'm sure, to, to deal with all this. As you know, our show here is, is primarily about the law of attraction and how people apply that in everyday lives. One of the most difficult things to do is to apply. Um, the whole concept of being positive and thinking positively when you're dealing with such horribly negative events and lots of people go through horribly negative events in their lives as you have done. How, how did you end up basically recovering and, and trying to find positives? Or, well, first of all, did you try to find positives? And second of all, if you did, how did you do it? Well, you know, after BJ died, I can tell you, you know, anybody I've talked to, several parents who have lost a child, be it from a car accident, be it from a shooting, be it from, you know, a drowning or whatever, you know, it takes time for the grieving process. You know, I I wanted to find something that would help keep my son's memory alive, you know, and be able to help other people. So I, so I, I found that by honoring my son by using his story and the, the amount of people that I've talked to how it has made a positive impact on them that they now take food allergies more serious because had someone talked to me the, the way I, I talk to the people now maybe it would have you know would have saved my son's life so I'm finding that you know with 
the the increase in food allergies. My goal is to get rid of food allergies. I don't want to have to tell this story anymore. You know, of course. You sure. Know? And you know, I'm I'm finding that I have a tireless effort now to help other people not have to suffer this kind of loss. You know, it's I guess it's therapeutic to me to share my son's story and find that you know other people are saying you know thanks for sharing and I'm going to be more careful with my child because losing a child is probably the parent's worst worst nightmare it's the worst nightmare because you never think about burying your own your own kid and as a parent you have to live the rest of your life with that memory and that experience right so you know I'm I've turned this tragic situation and basically you know I would have to say that you know you know God has given me a mission now to help raise awareness find a cure and help other people so you know I've I've turned to making this thing something positive and you know whatever the reason you know I've been given this mission to do this and it's gonna it's gonna happen we're gonna find a cure you know i went to washington dc to meet with congress you know nancy pelosi diane feinstein uh barbara boxer some of these uh high power senators and congress people to, to pass a bill and it's still going to vote to mandate epinephrine pins in the school so that anyone suffering from an anaphylactic shock has the vac- you know it has the shot ready to help save their lives right now 25% of the kids who get anaphylactic shock at school for the first time didn't even know they had food allergies there was a case in Virginia uh, I met the mother when I was in Washington DC who died at the school because she didn't carry her ep- epinephrine auto injector but there was another child's ones there because it wasn't prescribed to this young girl she she could not use it it belonged to somebody else but this bill would allow an epinephrine auto injector an emergency kit so that anybody suffering from a bee sting to a food allergy has access to that because every second counts having witnessed my son die in front of me I knew that after a couple of minutes he was going to have brain damage if he didn't you know have some kind of treatment so with epinephrine at the schools this will give children a better chance of living now i'm not sure how long you've been working on this i presume since your son's passing yeah so that's about uh, four and a half years ago give or take um i would guess that you've probably made some progress during that time tell us tell us about some of the progress you've made other than the uh the bill that that uh, is going through congress as far as progress yeah well, I, you know, I became the chair of the Bay Area, San Francisco Bay Area Walk for and Run for Food Allergies, and you know, we've in the um, in the three three years that I'm I'm leading it, we've you know we've raised over 155 thousand dollars just locally here, you know, and you know nationally we've raised several million dollars. Uh, I've uh, seen a lot of progress in oral immune therapy as another possible cure where they give you little uh, pieces of the allergen and build your tolerance to the food. Uh, Like I said, we're coming with the peanut patch as another treatment for that. I've been able to talk to several, you know, doctors all over the United States and and we're seeing big progress. I think we're going to be able to find a cure you know, soon. That's the thing. And, you know, although there's been several deaths since my son died, you know, and it, and it just is so tragic to hear that, you know, a lot of these people, again, didn't take food allergy seriously, where they didn't carry an epinephrine auto injector, or they weren't as careful as asking the questions of the chef. You know, I think we're making a lot of progress. People have heard my son's story and I'm hearing from, you know, thousands of people across the world, you know, how they've learned so much about how dangerous food allergies are. So, you know, there's a lot of progress going and there's a lot that we need still to do, 
you know, I've gotten a lot of the sports, uh, national sports, NBA. I've gotten, you know, uh, David Pack from Ambrosia, who's a Grammy-winning singer who has a peanut allergy to help with the cause. And, you know, San Francisco Giants, we're seeing that uh, a lot of the sporting events now, they're going with peanut-free, food allergy, food allergy uh, free sections and they're having food allergy awareness nights so I've gotten a lot of support from you know national sports teams that's one of the avenues that I'll be working with you know I have the ultimate fighting is also uh, supporting my cause too so and there's a lot of people who are getting their awareness raised of the dangers of food allergies. That definitely sounds like some very good progress. Do you ever get uh, stories from people saying things like, uh, we, we, we took your advice, we started carrying the auto injector with us, and it actually saved our lives in, in X situation? Yes, yes, I've had that. I had, and that's, that's very uh, rewarding, and that I'm so happy to hear that. They said after her my story, I was, uh, I was able to save my daughter because she had a, a reaction. We called 911, and the ambulance got there, and they treated her. And you know, I, I've heard several of those stories. Is, you know, I I feel so happy for them. You know that it happened. You know, even though it didn't happen for my my family, but you know, it's happy to hear other families who've been able to save their child. And because, like I said, uh, once you lose a child, you never get over it, but you learn to live with it. I would think that those uh, those success stories would probably give you a boost each time you give them, each time that you receive them, each time that you hear about them, that, to make you think, yeah, I am making a difference, and I'm just going to keep going because I want to keep making a difference. Yeah, definitely. Yeah, it, it is. You know, it's it's amazing how many stories they do hear and. Like I said, my goal is not to hear any more stories, but uh, it'll be time. It'll be time. It'll be time. I think um, people are uh, actually this next month. The city of San Jose, California, is honoring my walk and run as one of the uh, big events that they want to recognize at the state of the city address. So, you know, so I'm getting a lot of uh, support from the city of San Jose, California. In the Bay Area, they, like I said, a lot of the professional sports team, be it football, basketball, uh, they're all their own support. That's really terrific. Um, now, now, what is the peanut patch? The peanut patch actually um, is a little. It's kind of I, I would say compared like oh they they have this thing called like the smoking patch. You can just stick it on your body basically, and it. It allows your body to be touched by the allergen, and they will, you know, monitor your reaction to the patch, and basically they will start increasing the dosage so that at some point the goal is that with the peanut patch it will allow you to be able to eat the peanut and not have an anaphylactic reaction. So okay. You, so that's, that's the goal of that. So basically... If this thing is successful, you know, it's a one-year study that Stephen will start on, on February 4th, and basically we will be, I will be sharing the results on uh, a website that I have called the Food Allergy Zone. So you go foodallergyzone.com, and you'll be able to follow the stories as well as anybody who has food allergies can learn a lot of valuable information, and it's a forum for people to share. So basically I'll be able to tell people the progress that hey Stephen has this peanut patch and now he's able to eat you know one peanut or he's able to eat a handful of peanuts with no reactions okay and then that way any parent who has a child who has a child who's allergic to peanut allergies doesn't have that that fear like we do now that hey he might accidentally go out he's a teenager now you know a lot of the people that I talk to, their kids are, you know, young, so they're always around them. But when they become teenagers, right, they go out with their friends, they go out and eat, they go out to parties, and they're maybe not as careful with, you know, the peanuts. In, ca- in fact, there was a case of a woman in um, in Chino, California. She went to her her um, senior prom a couple of years ago because she was carrying one of those cocktail purses. The epinephrine pins are kind of big, so it wouldn't fit into her purse, so she chose that one day 
to go to her prom without her epinephrine pen, but accidentally eats something with peanuts and ends up dying at her prom. Mm. You know, so I mean, when you hit the teenage years, it's a lot different than when you're dealing with a toddler or an elementary school child where, you know, you're there usually with them and you're by them, their side. If they don't want to carry it, the parent is there carrying it for them. Right, right. No, so hopefully uh, the peanut patch will be very successful. You know. Oh, absolutely. Why, I hope so. Now, uh, we've been talking primarily about peanuts, and you also mentioned bee stings. Are there other nuts that are of concern? Yeah, um, for for my family, no, but uh, there are, you know, tree nuts, which are people who are allergic to cashews, you know, walnuts, Brazil nuts, any of the nuts that are grown on tree, they can have the anaphylactic shock. But right now, peanuts is probably the number one uh, you know, nut that is causing death right now, unfortunately. Mm-hmm. And the peanut allergy is very difficult to outgrow. You'll find that some of the other tree nuts, I've heard many stories of people outgrowing those. Actually, BJ was able to eat cashews, pistachios, uh, walnuts, but there's something about the peanut. And, but the peanut, I guess they're saying, is a legume. It's kind of like a bean. It's grown in the ground, right? It's not similar to the tree nuts that are, you know, the walnuts or the hazelnuts that are grown on trees. Mm-hmm. And so, like I said, you can be allergic to peanut and you can eat other foods. But, you know, there's lots of food allergies. I'm not just focusing on peanut. It's just that peanuts happen to, you know, kill my son BJ and I have another son who I'm trying to prevent from having to die. You know, he's 17 now and we're ready this summer to celebrate his 18th birthday mm. and you know his graduation from high school so right we're preparing ourselves again for for that day you know but I'm, what you know i like to get across to other people is that through knowledge it's power uh we i can i can actually you know testify that one of the reasons bj's not here was our lack of knowledge of food allergies. Right. You know, we had we had more knowledge and preparation, and that's what you know. My goal is is to help other people, educate them, get them aware that they'll have more power. So when I talk to these other families that hear my son's story and who are on these uh, food allergy forums, I tell them how far, how much far they ahead they were than my wife and I, and that they have such a much better chance of having their child survive this food allergy epidemic, you know, their, their way, you know, cause they're, they're, they're frantic. They're and they have high anxiety, but I said, you guys carried epinephrine pen. You guys are more careful when you go out and eat. You guys, there's more knowledge. There's more people trying to find cures and stuff. So, you know, it's kind of like technology. It's moving forward. Right. You know, and then, like I said, the goal is to to stop this thing. I, I kind of compare my life to John Walsh from America's Most Wanted. You know, his son was murdered, and he came out with that show, America's Most Wanted. Mm-hmm. I have a personal, I guess, vendetta against food allergies. I, I'm going to stop it in its track, you know. Right. It's not a person, but it's... It's a it's something out there that needs to be stopped, mm-hmm. and you know, and I'm I'm getting a lot of people who are supporting it. You know, I'm one person, but you know, like in life, all it takes is one thing to ignite it, and you know, and and you get a big following, and things change, right? That's true. That's exactly true. Now, uh, foodallergy.com. I'm sorry, foodallergyzone.com. Zone.com. That's the site that you that you founded with. Uh, yeah, we just uh, relaunched that just. Uh, a month ago, so mm-hmm. you know we're, we're getting a lot of people joining that group. Like I said, it's if you have a food allergies, I would encourage you, because like I said, knowledge is power. The more you know about food allergies, the safer you will be for your child. And as I understand, I, I, I emphasize children, but food allergies do affect adults. And you know, but it's just that we know that it's an epidemic that's you know increasing, and so. You know, if you have a food allergy now, you know, my concern is what is my what about my grandkids? Is it gonna follow down now? You know, what's gonna happen to the general population as, you know, they get married? Is it just gonna spread like wildfire, right? Mhm. 
Uh, the reason I brought up the website, foodallergyzone.com, I'm wondering, is this going to be merely an information site? Is that the primary purpose? I mean, I know we talked before we began doing this interview about uh, how you'd be able to include the interview on the site. But is it also going to be interactive? Is it going to be something where other people can share their stories and so forth? Yes, yes. You can you can do blogs. You can add videos. You know, I have a YouTube video that I did um, uh, by Pfizer that's on there. I have... Uh, we have you can add photos you can add events fundraising events uh there's groups so that you can basically communicate back and forth ask questions answer questions so it has facebook on there twitter so basically it's a food allergy community it's for everybody who are is interested in food allergy even if you don't have it you know and you're you're studying uh are you going into medicine and you want to just share information so it's open to anybody you know it's an open uh, food allergy zone that you can enter and just join and you know I encourage everybody to join because like I said the more you know about food allergy the safer you or your family will be what what kind of uh, reception has the website received it's only been uh, reopened now for you say about a month or so but uh, has been, has it gotten any yeah I just yet? Uh, basically co-founded this with Elizabeth Garino, I just kind of launched it last week, and we have right now, the, Elizabeth asked me to co-found it with her, and we just, in this past week here, just this week here, we have uh, added 60 people in this just one week. Now that's a pretty good so, start right there. Yeah, just one week. Yeah. You know, and then, I, like I said, my YouTube video on food allergies got close to 10,000 hits already, you know, and that just got launched uh, at the end of last year, too. So, mm-hmm. you know, I'm expecting, like I said, there's 15 million just Americans with food allergies, but like I said, as this, you know, gets out there and we have positive stories from these studies, you know, I'm expecting there to be, you know, thousands of people on here because I, probably I, I do connect to yeah, I connect to a lot of forums on Facebook on food allergies, and I know thousands of people there that haven't, you know, joined yet. Sure. And I'm hoping they will join. And I'm part of the, you know, the Food Allergy Research and Education, formerly Food Allergy and Anaphylactic Network. You know, I'm one of the uh, chairs on that group, and we expect to cl- have close to 50 walks and runs across the nation raising funds for food allergy education and research. So mm-hmm. all those people, you know, we're, we're talking, you know, thousands of people there. They In that membership, I think they have close to 20,000 members itself into the uh, food allergy and research and education group there. So you're tapping into all the different channels. That's terrific. Yeah. Well, thank you very much for telling your story. Before uh, we lose you here, any other uh, tidbits you want to share with us and, and anything about uh, how people can contact you? Should they contact you through the website? Yeah, kind of them contact me through the website. Uh, like I said, just join foodallergyzone.com. You know, you can send me emails there. You can basically, you know, send me texts there, and, you know, I'll try my best to, to answer your questions and stuff. But, you know, I just want to say to everybody that uh, that as a food allergy community, we need to unite. We need to change laws. We need to do things to protect not only your life, but the life of your future families, you know, your grandkids and your great-grandkids. And so that, you know, this thing is an epidemic now. We, we need to stop it in this track now before it becomes... Um, we all know what the reasons. We don't know what's causing it, but we know something has changed. When I was growing up, food allergies, you never heard of them. Now it's happening all the time, and it's not just because of awareness. When you have a food allergy, you know you have a food allergy. Either you're breaking out in hives or you're having difficulties breathing. And, you know, I, I never had that experience. My wife never had that experience, and it doesn't run in the family. So something is changing, and we need your help to... This. Brian Hom, you are inspirational. You've taken personal tragedy and turned it into a, a positive movement for, for awareness and education and change, and, and uh, our hats are off to you. So thank you very much for sharing your story today. All right. Thank you, Walt. We'll see you all next time here on LOA Today. Goodbye, everybody.